Hey, coach, how you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? Oh, doing awesome. Great. How's your summer been so far? I ran into you at the REO Speedwagon concert last summer, 4th of July. What better concert could that have been? Have, have you been to any shows this summer? Well, we were going, I, no, not there, but I, down in, in Kansas City, uh, I, I, we were going to go to the Earth, Wind, and Fire thing. It got canceled last, two nights ago, the last oh. night. I thought we yeah. were done with cancellations. I thought we yeah, were over that. <laughs> we, 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 my wife and uh, Missy and I try to go to a lot of different. Uh, uh, I, I we really love music, so it's we had a good time. Well, yeah, that was so cool seeing you there. I, that was that was awesome. Uh, obviously, when we get to about this point in, in the the summer, it's like okay, you know, baseball season's about to hit the midway point. It's like when you get to mid July, it's just it's just time to start thinking about some football. What what was that like as a coach? Uh, Cause I know you all, you enjoyed your off season activities as a coach, but once you get to about this time, it's like, it's fall, you know, fall camp's just a couple weeks away and you're just kind of in that mindset, aren't you? Yeah, actually you get to the point you're, you know, you're very well organized. Your players are up there working out uh, all summer long. Your players are going to school. Uh, July was kind of a nice time because you had about three weeks left because the next seven months, you're not going to have one day off. Right. And so that's, it was hugely important. And I really, with my staff, I really exaggerated that in, in terms of, you know, making sure you spend the time right with your family because, you know, the way this business is, you know, you don't realize when you're in it what it's like, but I mean, it's just remarkably time consuming. Well, coach, uh, we got to mention, of course, you're going to be inducted here into the 2022 uh, Hall of Fame class, College Football Hall of Fame here this December with uh, just, just some names like Andrew Locke, Champ Bailey, Kevin Falk. I mean, coach, two-time Matt Coach of the Year, SEC Coach of the Year, winningest coach at Toledo and Mizzou, two different schools. When you think about all that and put it in perspective as you head into the Hall of Fame, what are some emotions that, that kind of come to mind as, as this gets ready to, to take place this year? Well, you know, I, it, it's, it's, uh, I, I never ever thought, imagined I'd go into the Hall of Fame. I didn't really think about it until I, got, until I got a little box that was sent to me and I opened it up and there's a label in there and pretty much said of, Back in 18, whatever, this is how many when college football started and less than one one percent of all the coaches that coach gets into the Hall of Fame. Welcome to the team. You know, and I, I'm sitting there, I start crying. My wife's in the shower. I run in the shower. I said, I said, look at this. Look, at, I thought I was going. I, I, I didn't believe I thought one of my friends were playing a game on me or something. <laughs> and if they were, I was going to I was going to get them out of their car and I was going to blow their cars up. <laughs> but anyway, so I go in, I go into the, uh, the shower and she's she, first of all, I was crying. So she. She said, are you okay? Okay. Yeah. I said, read this. And she read it and then she started screaming. So anyway, th th this is kind of beyond anything I've ever, I never even, you know, goal wise had or dreamt about or anything, it, but it has a lot. I, my, my, my gift that I have from the good Lord is I've always been surrounded by good people my whole life, my whole life. I've been that way. Whether I go back to my high school football coach or Don James, you know, my, my college coach or just, just friends and whatever. I, I've been very, very fortunate and this is about a lot of people, you know, if you're a player and you get a Hall of Fame, 90 percent of this because you're remarkably talented. And then the other 10 percent, you know, it's, it's part of the team helping you get there. But me as a football coach, there's a lot of people, you know, and started you know, with Mike Alden. I, I can go back to a lot of different people uh, that had a huge impact and uh, feel very, very blessed. And I, I always go to, go to bed every night knowing that all, we also did the right things for kids. It wasn't, it wasn't just about winning, you have, you have to win to keep your job. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we, we, we help kids become better young men. And uh, fortunately, we won a lot of games uh, doing it. Yeah, one of those good people and great players, Chase Daniel, entering his 13th season in the National Football League. What traits did you see in him? Do you see in him that has allowed him not to just be this long standing backup quarterback in the NFL, but really the premier backup quarterback in the NFL when you're looking for somebody to back up your guy? Well, first of all, you know, his story recruiting him is a, by itself, but in regards to the NFL right now, the thing what he brings to you, and it's no fluke, he's still playing. Is his his when he's when he's had to play he's done well, it's, you know when you, you, a guy gets injured and that you're up you're up Chase go go do it he's done very very well most backup quarterbacks have no chance on winning he gives you a good chance to win it okay he gives you a good chance and the other thing about him is you know when he's walking around your locker room you got a better football team just because of his leadership just how he t handles people handles guys going through adversity handle guys with great success. So he, he, he brings a lot to you. And, and so that's no fluke 
uh, he, he's, he's very special. And, uh, you know, I, I've obviously uh, great respect for him and, and, and what, he's, what he's accomplished. Here I thought maybe he'd get into the coaching game and be a, be a coach right by now. Here he is still playing in the NFL uh, at this point, which is just tremendous what he's done for his career. Uh, coach, you, you arrived at Missouri in 2001. And as a Missouri fan, it's hard for me to admit this, but it wasn't the most attractive job at the time. Missouri had a fan interested Wayne. There wasn't maybe the commitment that roster was depleted. Just kind of coming in here, talk about some of the guys that helped lay, lay the, the groundwork for what this program became. Of course, a, a Brad Smith, but I, guys like, like Zach Aber and James Kenny that came in here and kind of helped lay the groundwork for what your program was to become kind of later on down the road. Well, it was, it was difficult. I mean, when, you know, when I left Toledo came here, um, you know, uh, Mike Alden, I would not have come Mike Alden wasn't here. I heard of him, some other people. And cause I'm going to need somebody that's just going to have my back here. You know, when you inherit a program at two winning seasons in 17 years, and I don't think I even probably gave that any serious thought, you know, like I, I'm not Superman here. And, uh, but at the end of the day, it was, it was remarkably difficult, much more difficult than I thought it was going to be because you're changing a culture, you know, you're changing everything. You're changing how, how a hundred and, uh, you know, 20 guys think how they compete, how they become great teammates. I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll, I mean, it just it goes on and on and on. And so I had my moments, certainly those first few years that, you know, and, but I didn't, I rarely ever would sit back there. Why'd you do this? It was more of just plowing along and believing in what I'm doing, believing in the program that we have and did not adjust the program. And I told Mike Alden, I said, right, right, right before I signed the contract, I said, I'm going to need you here. There's going to be a point when I'm going to need you to have my back. And he said, he said, I, and he just shook his head and, and he said, yeah, he said, I, I will have your back always. And that was that we had winning, we had losing, losing, winning 2003 then we had a losing oh, record four. yeah yeah so then all of a sudden we're down we, we, we were one game shy of, of of having a winning record but bottom line it was a losing record i met with him like two days after the game like i did every year two days after that our last game and i looked at him and i said i said mike remember that conversation we had i i, I need I, I need it he asked me about should do we need to change any personnel i said not at all i got great coaches you know, you hear all those things and adversity comes. And so Mike was there and he kind of held on to me. And, and uh, then we kind of went like this. It was you know, and a lot of great coaches, a lot of great people. And uh, it was sure, certainly once we got it going, it was really fun to compete. Yeah, Clint mentioned you arrived there. And what did you find that made Columbia and the University of Missouri unique and such a special destination? Well, the reason I came here, uh, first of all, you know, Bob Stahl used to be head coach here. He was a good friend of mine. I coached with him in Washington. He coached me when I was at, at uh, I was at, uh, at Kent State. So I, I knew, I knew, I knew Bob for, and he was, and he had, had left there. I became coordinator and I called him up and he said, you know, you got everything you need there. They just got to make sure they get the facilities going. But, you know, you're just kind of battling, you know, the lack of, uh, of success. And so when I came on the visit, I had uh, Mike Alden was number one. If I didn't feel good about Mike Alden, I was just out of there. I'm gone. I'm done. I'm not going to do this because I knew it was going to take, it was going to be really, really difficult. And which we just expressed that earlier. Um, but anyway, but the potential's there. You're, you're, you're in a state with it's big cities, Kansas city, big cities, St. Louis. I mean, you got to, you, you can actually get a recruiting base out of here, sign 10 kids a year. Although we never counted players, in, you know, we had to sign 10, but theoretically you can probably sign a good group of guys from your home state. So it wasn't like you're in Montana and you got, there's no, there's no population base. So that was something too, that everybody, everybody getting into coaching, that's what they did. They sat there and looked at that and they said, why can't you win in Missouri? I mean, you got, you, you got a good state to, to recruit in and everything else. So anyway, we finally got that going. And, and Jeremy Macklin was probably the one he was committed to Oklahoma. I think it was my second or third year. I don't recall right now, but you know, he's, he, all of a sudden, you know, I get a call you know, from him and he says, I, you know, I want to reconsider. He said, do you have a scholarship left? Uh, we'll <laughs> yeah, find yeah, one. Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, let me, ch let me check my, uh, my notes here. Okay. I mean, we might. So anyway, but, but that changed everything. We started pulling guys in the state, you know, and, and a lot of good players. And that was, that was a huge plus for us because in order to win here, you have to do that. You have to make sure. And we didn't say a hundred percent. 
you want 100 percent, but, but 90 percent of our guys have got to stay here over you know years period of time and for the most part that's what happened well 2007 was so special so special in fact that i kind of put my life on hold just to follow that team because it was like i was college age didn't really know what i wanted to do but i knew that i had to be there for that team i i mean i, w- I was traveled to the Colorado game was there for the Illinois game right off the bat. You guys win that game and they, they wind up going to the Rose bowl. And then of course, culminating with that Kansas game, I couldn't even listen to talk radio that week. It was the nervousness was there. I mean, that, that, that moment in that game, there will never be an interview you do that you're probably not asked about that, but just, I guess one thing I've always wanted to ask you, you know, forget the becoming number one in the nation, forget kind of the stakes, but going into that game, did you feel like Missouri that you had the better team? Because that's how it played out. You could see it, especially early on, that Missouri had the better off that we had the better offensive athletes on the field. Now you talk about the KU. Yeah, the, Kansas and Arrowhead. Yeah. 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 It was, you know, I have if I'm forced to make a decision, you know, I don't like doing that because there's so many great games we've been a part of. But I tell people about that game there. That game was that game was uh, as big a game. When I coached at Washington. I was in Rose Bowls. I was in Orange Bowls. I was in, you know, some great teams, Southern Cal. Uh, I mean, I can go, go on and on at, back in the day. But at the, at the end of the day, that was as good a college game day environment that there, you can't do better than that anywhere in the country. There might be some as good, but you can't do that. And it was, it was absolutely wild. And I remember pulling up in a bus with our team. And when I was, Go back to Rosewood. When I was at Washington. When you were in Pasadena, the the the, the, the it's uh, in an area there where the where the, uh, where the where the bowl is, and so the Rose Bowl. And so you come down, and all the fans, like then it was Washington fans, would pound on the buses. You only go two mile an hour because they just hundreds of hundreds of people like blocked us. But slowly we could. I mean, I look. We, you know, I, so Coach James always prepared our team for that. Well, I pull up. To, we we pull up to Arrowhead. Holy cow, we're going two mile an hour and they're pounding on the side of the buses. And I look back at the players. My job's preparation, okay? If I had told them about it, I'd been okay. I look back at my players, they're like this. They, I mean, they were like odd. So I'm, I'm, I think, gosh, I'm probably screwed this game up. But at the end of the day, it was, an, was just such an incredible environment. And if I'm forced to tell uh, what, what's the biggest game of your career, if I'm forced to say it, I don't necessarily, it is, but it, it was very close to being, I, you know, it's, it's, it's up there with three or four other ones. It's remarkable, remarkable game. And thank all I wanted to do. My prayer was to dear Lord, I don't know if you care who wins, but I do. I just need a little help here. So <laughs> we got that, it. That must've worked for both of us. I guess that's how, <laughs> I guess that's how it gets done. Coach uh, back in 2016, you uh, came out with your book, uh, the 100 yard journey. It's, it's an amazing book that chronicles your career so well. And it talks about how, you know, Missouri's moved to the SEC and kind of you and Mike Alden and, and kind of what you needed from the University of Missouri to make that commitment here. And to think that's been now 11 years ago, uh, Missouri had to make this financial commitment and it's a cultural difference and you have to really have the, the, the fans in order to do this. Do you think that now, 11 years later, um, you guys laid the groundwork for that. Do you think Missouri still remains that a, a good fit for the SEC that they're that they're still putting the the right things in place to ensure that Missouri's in a in a good seat here in the SEC as the whole college football world just continues to collapse around? I mean, it's it's just crazy out there. Uh, facility wise, uh, you know, I was always on that because you know you bring an eighteen year old kid in, and he, that's what he's going to look at when he, when he's looking to make a decision to go to school. And, you know, we did a lot of great things. They're building an indoor facility right now. I think they've done a in, south end zone. Was a, they started that with Mike Alden and I to get the thing going. And they've just done a remarkable job facility wise. But now there's a thing, um, you know, called, called the NIL. And uh, the whole world's changed for college football for everybody. And it's all about money. Uh, <clears throat> you can be started on this. I can talk forever. Yeah. Uh, probably don't make much sense uh, out of the whole thing. But, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, you know, Missouri's done all the right things <clears throat> to be able to compete at the very, very high level in the best conference in the country. Um, but it, the way this is going to go right now, I'm, uh, I have no idea what's going to happen. You know, the rich are going to get richer. Um, I always say, well, it's not going to be fair. And people look at me and say, well, life's not fair. But you know what? Sport is supposed to be fair. Sports, you know, you don't say, OK, you have 100 scholarships and you've got 25. Let's go play, you know. 
that's kind of, it isn't. So I'm, I'm disturbed about that. I'm, I'm disappointed that the NCAA, I shouldn't start saying this, but the NCAA, I mean, you talk about, why, why, don't, why don't you, five years ago, eight years ago, get a mammoth and then have these intelligent people come up with a plan and have different models that we can look that that's great for college football. It's paying players, which we need to do. I have no problem with that, mm-hmm. but having a plan in place rather than just going out and says, okay, go ahead and do what you want to do. It's uh, it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's, I think it's, 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 I'm really disappointed with how it was all handled and uh, you know, college football is going to change. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does. Yeah. Nobody does. Day to day. You don't know what's going to happen. It's like, I, I thought I'd seen it all. And when I saw USC and UCLA to the big 10, I was like, okay, I can't, I just can't, my mind can't wrap around this anymore. And you talk about in your book, you, you know, 2015, you, you retire from coaching, you're um, having health issues. And, but it's almost like, you know, just seven years later, the, the game's changed so completely that it's almost like, you know, you got out at the right time, almost fair enough. Yeah, I mean, and, and really, and I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm not a part of this, uh, you know, but I want college football to, 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 to win. I want college football to be great. Um, I just, uh, I just think it's so poorly planned. There's, there's, you know, people are jumping, you know, um, all over the place. Alex Grinch, the defense coordinator at Oklahoma now is at Southern Cal my, my nephew. Yeah. And, uh, he, I mean, I was hit with him the other day and he just, just shook his head and it's just, it's all about money, you know, yeah. and you, you got to have enough money to, to be able to pay the players and, so it's it's uh, I, I I hope I hope it gets fixed someday, but it'll be really interesting to see, you know where it's going to go. And if you uh, if you have a lot of money, tons of money as a program, you're probably going to be, be have a chance. And if you can't bring in that massive amount of money, then you're probably just going to dwindle away. So you know I think leagues are going to change more. I think it might go into a, another just a just a power league by itself with maybe forty teams. I don't know what's going to happen, yeah. but something's something's got to break down. But they're still going to have to be in the NFL. They call it a salary cap. Oh wow, yeah. that's genius! <laughs> oh my gosh, who would ever think of something like that? Well, you know, the, the, you know, college football's got to get their stuff together, you know, and kind of figure out what they're doing. I'm just. The disappointment in the NCA is just, uh, you know, I think they should just move on and start another organization. But other than that, I have, don't have much feeling about Could it. Could be heading there, yeah. Yeah, I think we all share that sentiment. But, uh, Coach, the SEC slogan is it just means more. Why is the SEC the best conference in college football? And specifically, why is Missouri so special within the SEC? Well, you know, when we got in, when all the stuff went down, and you know, Mike Alden was only the communicator with me and the president uh, of the university at the time. And um, it pretty much was, was, you know, there was a guarantee that nobody was going to leave uh, the Big 12 at that time. Nobody was going to leave. Everything was fine. Then all of a sudden, I forget one or two schools, I which one they were, came out publicly and said, well, we're really not sure what we're going to do. Just when a weekend before when all these ADs were together and they said, well, we're in, we're in, we're in. Then, and then that's when they said, well, we're going to check. The SEC had contacted them. And that's when they went to the SEC and said, you still want to talk. That's how the whole thing happened. I think the SEC came to us because of our records in the last previous since 2006 or something like that. I mean, we were, we, we won a lot. We went on one of the highest levels in, in all college football. Um, do I recommend going to the SEC? No. <laughs> From a coaching perspective? No. You know, you want some job security. I mean, it's just, it's such, it's, it's, a, it's, a, you get strap it up, man, strap it on. You got to go because it is a remarkably group of, uh, Teams, even the poor teams are good. And I, you've, you've, we've seen that play out every single year. You see it play out. Uh, there are so, it, it's such a great league. It is such a great league. It's remarkably competitive. And you almost just got to change. You, you have to have an attitude. You've you got to go on and say, listen, you know, let's go, man. Let's go battle this. Let's fight this. And that's kind of what we did. You know, and I can tell my player, the first year we didn't play very well. Thought we were, I didn't think I handled the team right. Then the next two years won divisional championships and, you know, 13, 14. And, but the approach with the team then is, man, you've been in this thing. Are you kidding me? Let's go have fun. Let's just go play. We get to play in all these stadiums. You, you, you've seen on TV since you've been 10 years old, let's go. Right. And, and, you know, with great leadership and coaches and players, uh, you know, we got going in the, going in the league pretty good. And, you know, I felt that uh, I felt good about that just because 
You know, it's a, uh, it's just, there's so many good teams. I call it the line of scrimmage uh, league because the offense and defense linemen, even the poor teams got really good linemen. I mean, they're just, that's the biggest, strongest, fastest. So anyway, that's kind of, that's kind of my view of it. Um, I think they're in great hands right now, leadership wise, the SEC is. Uh, you know, they're going to have a lot of people making a lot of decisions on what they're going to do. You know, you know, Washington, you know, they, they take SC and UCLA and I'm, I'm partial to Washington because I, I coached there all those years, I think 11 or 12 years. Uh, and then you got Oregon and Washington sitting there and they're, they, they're better than UCLA. And what are they going to do? I mean, they, they're, 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 something's yeah. going to happen. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. Well, Last thing, Coach, before we get you out of here, and we can't thank you enough for your time today, and I would hope that everybody, all Missouri fans, will go out and uh, check out your book. It's been out a few years, but I highly recommend it, The 100-Yard Journey. Check it out. Um, last thing, Eli Drinkwitz, uh, entering year three. Uh, Missouri's been 500 the, the two years that he's been here, but the recruiting is at a level that we haven't seen in, in quite some time. So that's really coming around, which is so important here in this day and age. Uh, just what do you – you know in your in your dealings with coach Drinkwitz about uh kind of his approach and how you see his trajectory with this program going forward well i you know he's just he's building it you know he's he's gonna you know everybody's got to put their their whole stamp on it you know when i came here and we changed everything you know because i knew exactly what we're going to do and we didn't deviate from it uh he has his plan i hope he does well the first year is almost a wash you know because of the covid thing it's just almost a wash you didn't yeah even get, it is you know you didn't count that year you, you got to give them another year because it, you, you couldn't get anything accomplished. It was just to, yeah. to sell your program at all. Uh, but, you know, I'm certainly rooting for him. It's, it's, it's a remarkably competitive business. And, uh, you know, I think he's, he's doing, he's doing a good job, but at the end of the day, it's JWB just win baby. Because if you don't do that, you don't do that. You can't, you know, it's not going to happen. I don't care who it is. Uh, but I'm real excited for him. Um, I think he, he uh, does a lot of good things and, Hopefully it works out well. Uh, did you think Missouri would ever be in the same conference as Texas again? Yeah. <laughs> How about that? How about that? Bring Texas and Oklahoma. In. Yeah, let's you know, go. You know what? My disappointment was we could have got a couple better teams than those two teams. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's just, it's just, that's, yeah, I know. Deal. And it's going to, it's not, it's going to, things are going to change still. Who knows what's going to happen? Oh, it is. Yeah. By the time this is finished, we might have a uh, Washington and Oregon in the big 12. We'll just have to keep checking Twitter and see what happens. Coach. Thank you so much for your time. It's, it's been a pleasure. It was such a pleasure following your career. I mean, just those Missouri teams really kind of help forge, you know, the path that we're on today to be in this, in, in this capacity, doing shows like we're doing now and interviews with people like you. Thank you so much. We've had so many of your former players on. It's great to have you once again. So enjoy the rest of the summer and uh, enjoy this football season coming up, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'm, and I'm so very, uh, uh, you know, thankful for all my players and coaches that were that make me look heck of a lot better than probably I am. So God bless oh, you. Thank, thank you. you. It was an honor coach. Thanks.